this list was much harder to make. My ranking of the top 10 vampire films of all time is my appreciation for various aspects of the genre, which includes storytelling, visual aspects, historical significance, and the impact they had on the subgenre of horror films. Each film on this list has left a mark on the genre and contributed to the evolution of vampire cinema. Please be warned, this is my personal list. I've got to keep saying this every single time because someone says, oh, you missed the film. No, I did not miss the film. This is my list. However, my list might be different to your list. Your list might be different to my list or my list might be the same as your list it happens everyone has their own taste so let's get straight into it at number 10 i have the lost boys which came out in 1987 now this film captures the essence of the 1918s teen culture and has a great blend of comedy horror and teenage rebellion and director joel schumacher beautifully blends a world of vibrancy that perfectly complements punk rock soundtrack the film's portrayal of vampires as cool, seductive, and dangerous beings added a new fresh spin on the genre. With its focus on family dynamics and the struggles of adolescence, The Lost Boys remains a quintessential coming-of-age vampire film that resonates with younger audiences. At number 9, I have Interview with the Vampire, which came out in 1994. Directed by Neil Gordon, this film was a sumptuous and visually striking movie that brings Anne Rice's novel to life. The film explores existential dilemmas, Faced by immortal vampires that struggle with loneliness, morality and the complexity of the human nature, Tom Cruise delivers a captivating performance, while Brad Pitt's vampire brings in vulnerability to the narrative. The film's opulent production design and Anne Rice's involvement within the screenplay elevated it to a refined and emotional vampire movie. At number 8 I have Fright Night which came out in 1985 and this successfully blends horror, comedy and homage to the classic vampire lore. This film carefully balances scare, self-aware sense of fun, paying homage to the Hammer films of the past while adding a modern twist to it. Tom Holland's direction keeps the pacing very tight and this still remains a beloved classic for its ability to both terrify and humor the audience. At number 7 I have Dracula which came in 1931. Todd Browning's Dracula still holds a historical significance as being the first sound adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Bela Lugosi's portrayal as Dracula was a definitive representation of the character, setting the standard for portrayal of vampires and Dracula in decades to come. The film's gothic atmosphere and visuals, like the looming castle and a cobweb-covered crypt, cemented the image of Count Dracula in popular culture. Yes, this film may seem dated for a lot of audience members, but for me, it still remains a pivotal film in the vampire genre. At number 6, I have What We Do in the Shadows that came out 2016. I actually enjoyed this movie, this is why this list is subjective. This is a New Zealand mockumentary vampire movie that is directed by Taika Waititi and Jermaine Clement. This is actually a hilarious and inventive take on the vampire genre, combining humour and a fresh perspective on age-old vampire tropes. This film breathes life into the vampire comedy subgenre. At number 5 I have Bram Stoker's Dracula which came out in 1992. Francis Coppola's visually stunning adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula is a lush and opulent retelling of the classic story. Sumptuous costumes and practical effects pay homage to the genre while introducing a romantic and passionate element to the film. At number 4, a vampire which came in 1932. Carl Theodore Dreyer's Vampire is a haunting and atmospheric masterpiece. The film's dreamlike visuals, innovative use of shadows, and eerie sound design creates an unsettling experience even after the credits roll. Yes, this film was not a traditional vampire film, but it heavily influenced the horror genre, showcasing the potential of film as an art form. At number 3 I have Let the Right One in that came out 2008. Now this is a Swedish gem that I highly recommend everyone to check out. This reinvents the vampire film as Ponent and the atmospheric coming of age story by focusing on the emotional journey of the characters. The film explores loneliness, friendship and the nature of evil. The snowy desolate setting adds to the film's haunting atmosphere and the cast gave a wonderful performance. Let the Right One in transcends the typical vampire narrative, delivering a powerful and touching experience of the human condition. At at number 2 I have The Horror of Dracula which came in 1958. Christopher Lee's portrayal as Count Dracula in this hammer horror classic solidified him as an iconic vampire figure. Once again, this film's use of vibrant and gothic imagery revitalized the vampire genre in the late 1950s and set a new standard for subsequent vampire movies. And at number one, it has to be Nosferatu which came out in 1922 which I think is the founding father of vampire and German expressionism. It's an iconic and groundbreaking silent film. It sets the visual and thematic standard for vampire films to come. Max Schreck's portrayal of Count Orlok with his eerie appearance and haunting presence remains one of the most enduring and memorable vampire performances in film history. Nosferatu establishes a sense of dread and horror through its use of shadows, 
German expressionist visuals, and haunty music, leaving an indelible mark on the horror genre and solidifying its position as the quintessential vampire film. And of course, there are many honorable mentions which I didn't put in my top 10, which I think it's hard to put in my top 10, but I just couldn't decide. A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, which came out 2014. This stands out for his artistic and poetic approach, while I Am Legend that came out 2007 showcases a post-apocalyptic take on vampires. Near Dark, which came out 1987, adds a western twist to the genre. And From Dusk Till Dawn, that came out 1996, combines vampires with crime and action elements. And Blade in 1998 revolutionized the vampire subgenre by blending it with the superhero genre. Kronos, which came came in 1993, showcases Guillermo del Toro's unique storytelling. This is basically my ranking. My ranking reflects on a mixture of historical significance, artistic innovation, and the lasting impact these films had on the vampire subgenre, and the evolution of vampire cinema owes it to these movies which continues to inspire and affect audiences to this day. You can follow me on Letterboxd under T's Real Talk, which I'm going to start ranking all these movies from there and also giving in my detailed approach and my analysis of them. And hopefully you can look forward to more films I review in the future. I hope you liked the video. I hope you liked my ranking. Let me know what you think. I know there's a there's hundreds of vampires films out there. And I know it's very hard to put in the top 10, but this is my personal top 10. Where would you put your vampire films in the top 10? And what would you change around for my top 10? Let me know and hopefully I can see you in my next video.